Well, here's something to keep in mind as you're shopping this holiday season. Counterfeit items are getting harder and harder to spot. Most shoppers might not even know they got duped. A recent survey found that 7 in 10 consumers were deceived into buying a counterfeit item at least once in the last year. Something that could put you and your loved ones at risk. National consumer correspondent Ashar Karashi takes a look at how law enforcement and retailers are finding these fakes. Look at this. You've got more and more merchandise There's out here. Massive amounts of Louis Vuitton out here. Ashley Sands used to spend a lot of time on Canal Street, a place some have called Manhattan's bootleg bazaar. As an intellectual property attorney, Sanders works with major retailers to find and prosecute counterfeiters. We would come with our investigators and, um, you know, often with NYPD, um, and we would do raids down here. We saw police pushing vendors to pack up. And look, you can see them loading yeah. all of this material that's just getting Into loaded cars, up. Like it looks like they're they're going. NYPD seized more than a billion dollars worth of counterfeit luxury goods last month, the largest bust of its kind in U.S. history. This is what we think of traditionally when you're, you're trying to find knockoffs and counterfeit items being sold on the streets, but this has largely moved online. Right. Counterfeiting is the largest illicit trade in the world. Here in the U.S., we're buying an estimated $2 trillion worth of counterfeit products each year. Do you think most consumers have an idea that a lot of what they could be buying, you know, is not real, has not been safety tested? Probably not. After a fire killed two siblings at a Queens home in April, the New York Fire Department discovered a burned scooter and charger in the home with a fake safety certification label. We are getting a closer look at what sparked the fire. The FDNY releasing these images. Investigators suspect the fire was sparked by another charger, which may have had the same kind of counterfeit sticker. Everything on this table that you see electronic is a fire hazardous. And counterfeit electronics kill a lot of Americans every year. We have hundreds of reports of houses being burnt down based on these type of electronic, counterfeit electronics. Customs and Border Protection officers are responsible for targeting and seizing imports of counterfeit and pirated goods. A lot of it happens at the country's busiest international mail facility at JFK Airport. Up to a half million packages come through here each day. How do you find those counterfeit items? Through our expertise, through our targeting systems, through our risk analysis, through our partnerships, through our intelligence, uh, we're able to use that to target uh, uh, packages um, based on past seizures and the like. And these officers see it all. In a lot of cases, we really don't know what's in those pills. And when you test them, you'll find some alarming chemicals or dust products or rat poison. Many packaged to look like the real thing. The, the, here, is, here is our biggest concern, right? You have an item like unapproved contact lenses that are being shipped here. This is scary. This is an item that people are using as a legitimate contact lens. The Government Accountability Office says CBP needs to do better. It warned the agency about holes in their enforcement in a 2020 report that concluded its primary enforcement processes are not tailored to combat counterfeit goods in small packages. The sheer number of small packages that are coming in was a major, major challenge for them. It's almost two million packages per day. Last year, your own inspector general criticized your agency for, quote, failing to coordinate or manage your IPR strategy with the Department of Homeland Security and failure to collect accurate data to help manage your IPR enforcement. What's your response to those criticisms? Look, I mean, there's not a day I don't come to work and, and think that we can't do a better job of what we're doing. But when we sit in a facility uh, like we're sitting in today, let's look at the, the things we are doing to improve that. What they are doing is banking on an investment, not in manpower, but in machine power, in the form of artificial intelligence. We can only put so many officers in this mail facility. That's why they're adding these AI-powered x-ray machines. They collect and analyze the features of original products and then use that data to process and target fakes at a much greater speed and volume than humans could ever do alone. So the machine, it targeted this. Yes. And imagine that the machine learning, the more packages you scan, the better it gets. Exactly. Yeah. That brings us to the world's largest online retailer. 
Amazon is already using AI to scan every listing on its site. The machine learning data is critical because we're able to identify those evasive schemes and turn that information over to law enforcement so they can take quick action. These dashboards and tools and machine learning uh, on a daily basis scan over 8 billion, that's a billion with a B, uh, different uh, listings from sellers. I just want to make sure I heard that correctly. <laughs> 8 billion a day? 8 billion a day. Most of what we're finding is what customers, consumers, and brands don't ever see. It's the front line, it's the first line of defense. On that front line, an international team of former law enforcement and prosecutors. And when you say go after them, what does that mean? Hold them accountable uh, for attempting to sell counterfeits in the Amazon store. Amazon showed us video of one of its busts and said last year it stopped six million counterfeit products from landing at our doors. Clearly a massive undertaking. In Philadelphia this year, customs officers seized more than a half million dollars worth of fake products. But investigators warn seizures only represent what they can find, a small dent in a $2 trillion market. Usher Qureshi, CBS News.